Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods of the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four of us play D&D in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy, and I will be DMing us through our third season in Icewind Dale. Joining me at the table are three of my favorite humans. I'm Scala. I play Wink Wuggins, friend to vagrants and bitter enemy to kobolds. I'm Andy. I play Everett, the reborn ranger who, uh, well... I was going to say bitter enemy of kobolds. Oh, so, okay, I have some about kobolds, too. We can all be bitter enemies to kobolds. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, the Reborn Ranger, who... Oh, look at this. On my character sheet, it says, Also, bitter enemy to kobolds. Assassin of kobolds. Well, what a coincidence, because... I'm Jimmy, and I play Jib, the sea elf fighter, and I'm here with a reminder that kobolds are cold-blooded reptiles and capable of empathy and are not deserving of your sympathy. <laughs> All right. Um, spoilers for the next uh, several episodes of this campaign. We're just killing kobolds. That's all this is. Right. So please tune in for the next hour and whatever number of minutes as we mercilessly slaughter kobolds, ham-free, I might add. Thank fuck. But if that's not really your thing and you don't really want to listen to it, that's fine. But you should still talk to us about why you don't want us to kill kobolds in our Discord. Or, or just give us money on Patreon apropos of kobolds dying or living. With all that out of the way, let's get into episode 5. After finally making their way into Tourmaline to investigate the Crimson Glimmer Mines, the manufacturing site of the red ores found in the Black Sword cultists at Caradeneval, the players met a few lively folks and immediately were tasked with helping miners escape a recent cave After coming into contact with the red ore known as Wraithesite, as well as a few not all that pesky kobolds, the players reached the cave only to learn that it was caused by a mysterious robed figure. The team subdued this individual, and upon making their way back to the inn, were sent a message by their handler Kessa, asking for an end-of-day report. What would you all like to tell Kessa about your findings at Tourmaline? As far as I see it, we only got 25 words. What's the most important details? She'd probably like to know we arrived here. We spoke with Grant. We took a prisoner. You might want to lead with that. As I finish tying said prisoner tighter and checking over the snare that I had cast in front of the door. I think it's worth mentioning that there's some Wraithesat being smuggled to some unknown owl. Mm, probably. I do not honestly know if that is best yet. Doesn't it seem strange? How do we know that there is not more Vetus is involved with than this investigation? We don't, but far as I see it, we came here to see what was going on with the Wraith site, and if some of it's being misappropriated, that seems relevant to our investigation. Now, if there's anything we're going to leave out, I think maybe this feller gesturing to the prisoner might be worth leaving out. What do you say that? The way they talk to us seems like some sort of personal vendetta, not having anything to do with the cult or the Wraith site itself. Mm. Did we check the body for a sign of the cult? We did. did. Yeah. No, nothing. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. That's right. This is me misremembering that. Ah, yes. How thoughtless of me after giving such a speech to Jeb here about sticking to the job. Yes, these were my words. Wink, I think this wise. This task and this task shall be our focus alone. All right. So then, what did we learn from Grant? He seemed clueless. A familiar pattern at this point, I think. His suspicion, if I recall correctly, was that whoever was involved in this smuggling was doing so out of desperation. It's a lot of trouble to go through for desperation. You know, it's easier ways to make money. We don't know what kind of money the cult is offering in exchange for the Wraith side. If it's money at all. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right. Let's figure this out. Jib gets a piece of parchment and a pen and starts to figure out 25 words. We don't need to do the 25 words exactly, but do you want to just high level what you are going to relay to Kessa in those 25 words? Okay. What you're leaving out, what you're keeping in, any of you can tell me. Arrived in Tourmaline, went to the Crimson Glimmer Mine, spoke with Grant. Grant seems clueless. Possible smuggling operation? Possible smuggling operation, destination, the Isle. That'd be 21 words. Unknown? Isle. Unknown Isle. That leaves enough for three smiley emojis at the end, I think. That's right. 
Kessa clearly would appreciate that. And one of those winking with the tongue out. Semicolon P. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. You all send that. Is there anything else you all do as you start to settle in? How late is it right now? I would say after all the hubbub in the cave, it's deeply dark. It's probably 10 p.m.-ish. When we came in a little while ago, were there, like, a lot of people downstairs? There, yeah, there were a good number of people still, yeah. This is the main bar in town, so it's where people congregate. Okay. I shall keep a close eye on things. I will return shortly. And I would like to go downstairs and do a pass... Looking around for anyone I might recognize. Cool. Roll me perception. That's a 12. On a 12, no one except someone that doesn't look to be in great shape, and you would recognize this person as Vernon from earlier in the day. Aha. Uh-huh. Is he at the bar? He is leaning over a table of people just trying to enjoy their own situation, and he's clearly being disruptive. Mm, I see. He is far gone at this point. Earlier in the day, capable of a coherent conversation. Even just from his body language, you've seen this kind of behavior enough that this probably isn't someone you'll have a meaningful conversation with. Okay. Maybe an entertaining one. Yeah, I just clock that and consider what he was rambling on. Last we saw him about sacrifices and all of this business. But if that's all, even if... I don't see anything that looks suspiciously cultist-like. Then I'll just keep making a pass and return eventually. Yeah, absolutely. Jib, you want to do something before bedtime? Yes. Jib is going to look out the window. (laughs) Roll me... Look to the skies. Oh, okay. What were you going to say? I was going to say roll me perception, but you've already told me that you've located sky. The check for that is one. Yeah, I'm looking at the sky. (laughs) You've successfully looked at the sky. (laughs) Great. Well, I am going to roll. If you want me to roll perception. (laughs) Yeah, sure, you can do that. Okay, that's actually pretty good. That's uh, 18. This is the lesson where the DM has to learn how to find out something interesting that you find in the sky and honor the role for the sake of player satisfaction. Well, I know what I'm... I'm going to see it whether you tell me it's there or not. Oh, great. Okay, in what my, do you see? in my purview as the player. Oh, I think I know what you see. I, I yield DM chair for a moment while you explain to me what your role gives us. Yeah, I see this same sort of seabird circling overhead that I saw a few days ago. And I also saw it in the harbor at Noralu before boarding the ship to come here. And Jib is going to just stare at this bird for a while as it circles. And he notices that he can almost guide this bird's motions as it seems to circle lower, swoop a little closer, until it's coming right near the window. Swoops down, swoops right back up. What you looking at over there? You've been staring at something for quite a while. It's this bird. I think it's an albatross. Supposed to be good luck. Seems like it's following me. Saw it a few days ago. I think it's the same one. It's weird to be this far inland. It's gotta mean something, right? You feel lucky? (laughs) (laughs) Punk. (laughs) Not usually. Hey, Jib. What's all this business with the unions around here? Well... I don't know much more than you do. What is it you're looking to know? You said you were in one, right? Oh, yeah. Sword Coast rope haulers. So good. But that's a bit down the coast. What's that like? We don't have nothing like that down in uh, Red Rock. Well, you know, it's kind of just something you do. You pay your dues, you keep your job. Every so often, you know, they go in for negotiations. Things sometimes come to blows, erupt out onto the street. Things get a little hairy sometimes, but, you know, otherwise, I think they're looking out for us. They're doing their best. Who are you fighting with? Well, you know, the companies don't really want to give us a fair shake, and so uh, sometimes we have to be a little more insistent on getting what our labor's worth. That ain't no different up north, I can see. These companies that you got, they don't act too much different than the lords we have down in the south. No, I suppose they don't. I've only heard stories about the lords, the kingdoms. Well, I won't say I miss it, but... Yeah, no butts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You don't miss home? I miss the town. I miss the people. But the way of living doesn't change much year to year. And even when you think maybe you got your hands on some change, some stability, well, you know, it feels like you took two steps back and only one step forward, I guess. I Sorry for bothering you. No, not at all. I like, uh... Good camaraderie on a job. You know, rope haulers, they're pretty quiet. Other than the songs, you know. You got a rope hauling song for me? I'll teach you one sometime. But right now it's... It's late. Yeah. It's getting late. I'll hold you to that, though. 
All right. Good night, Jib. Good night, Wink. Best fucking dialogue in the world. All right, if there is nothing else... Real quick, to borrow a line from Jeppy. As Jib trances tonight, he's going to get a bird's eye view of this oh, surrounding area. God. An albatross eye view, to be specific. An albatross is a bird. Yeah, I know. That's why I said that. Anyway, that's all. Just, you know, he finds himself lifting off and seeing Tourmaline from an aerial view. You'd probably spot Everett circling around the block a couple of times in the night, just wandering. The even-mannered, trusting individual that Everett is. Yep. Not completely unhinged at all. <laughs> Cool. All right, you all gain the benefits of trances, inertness, and resting that you Hell would yeah. normally. And when you all wake up, the prisoner is there, conscious. Good. But you all wake up to the sound of the sending stone vibrating. You pick it up. You may not have noticed it earlier, but affixed to this is some kind of like ironwork. It's been augmented in some way. Any of you can roll insight on this to kind of make out what's going on with this sending stone. <coughs> I got a nine. It's a low-ass check, but... These are starting off some real low rolls for everybody. Insight, 17. Oh my god, yeah. The nine three. was probably gonna... The three wouldn't. The nine was gonna do it. The 17 <laughs> definitely does it. You would imagine that basically this ending stone has likely just been augmented by some of that strange fail barrage technology that you've seen glimpses of in the mines. And as a result, this ending stone is able to be activated more frequently than had you have ever encountered some in other adventures or times. This one is just merely augmented. Interesting. And can be activated more than once. That being said, it is vibrating and a message from Kessa peeps out of it. And just says, Thank you for the update. Sounds like your efforts in Keratin Val were more fruitful than those in Tamerlane, which is certainly unfortunate. That being said, I think it is best we pull you to Bryn Shen there. There's something here that you need to know about and something here that we need you for. There will be a carriage waiting for you outside should you get this message by morning. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Augmented indeed. That's like 60 words. Great. <laughs> cool. She like got rid of the vowels and all of them. You, you know, it's great. Great. It's not a word count. It's a character count. It's Twitter. It's all good. <laughs> Message sends. You get the gist. Either way. So now you, you mentioned weird technology. Is this specifically not Arcana? If Clark were here, he'd be killing these engineering checks. Like Engineering checks were Arcana, I thought. Maybe they weren't. No, they were your specific tool proficiency from your background. It's a tool proficiency. Yeah. Just yeah, sort from- of. Just vaguely falls under artifice, right? Yeah, like industrialism, artifice, engineering, it's that world. We're not going to stare at it too hard, don't worry. Got it. Clark would look very closely at this, you're right. Oh, Clark would be at it for a while, yeah. But Jib's not interested in such things. There's no rope involved. (laughs) So yeah, the message says what to do. There's a carriage waiting for you outside. The prisoner is in this room with you, tied up in the corner, awake. The message seems to imply that she is already there. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Are you going anywhere with that? I guess it's just because we as players don't really know what's going on geographically at all. I just think it's a little weird that, like, she just, like, magically got there in, like, a day. It would be more than a day. And she didn't say that she's there, but she did say we have something for you, which is... We, okay. If she's not there, she's on route, and she expects to meet you. Okay. Sure, okay. Yeah, then I read into that. Okay. Yeah, this isn't season seven of Game of Thrones teleporting conveniently shit. Like, Good grief. The passage of time would make sense. She could have made that trek in this time. Or be close enough. Generally speaking, how many days by carriage is it from Tourmaline? It's going to be a full day in the carriage. Okay, yeah. cool. Good morning. <laughs> what are you saying to your companion to the prisoner? The prisoner. That's amazing. Oh my God. How'd you sleep? It is not my best sleep, I will admit. You were out pretty cold. Well, no thanks to you all. Anyway. You knocked me out. What do you expect? Well, I'm afraid that is a direct result of the consequences of your own actions. It's always so easy for you people to talk about consequences and actions when you don't know how we live. We're going to have a whole carriage ride to discuss that sort of thing. Right now, I prefer not to discuss moral conundrums before I've had my breakfast. Very well. I will talk whenever you are ready. But where is this carriage going? Bryn Shandair. He sighs. Everett keeps a real close eye on his reaction. He just like sighs and sulks and says, very well. I mean, we could leave you here. There's some angry miners I'm sure would have a few unkind words and a few sharp objects for you. I have blown it. 
and Bryn Shander is the better option. Thought you'd see things that way. I'm gonna go furnish myself with some eggs. Wink wanders downstairs. <laughs> Priorities. I'm gonna go with Wink too. Everett doesn't eat, right? Everett wouldn't eat. The prisoner will be on the ground. Everett will probably just stare at the prisoner for the next however many minutes that they should eat breakfast. <laughs> I sit on the end of the nearest bed with my crescent battle axe leaning over the top of it staring directly at this guy the entire time roll intimidation you got it (laughs) all right well it looks like you got this situation under control i'm gonna go with wink very well enjoy your meal thank you intimidation that is a 17 all right looks rather intimidated just don't hurt me okay i'll have plenty to say on the ride i am sure you do cool between you and me prisoner Your accent is not like the rest of these simple folk. Where are you from, really? I do not know. I was adopted. Grew up in Lonelywood, working for Felborosh. And this is a human? Yes. I see. Can I roll insight on that? Yeah, you can. Insight. That is 24. He appears to be telling the truth. There may be details about his upbringing he's not revealing. Sure. But generally, there's nothing telling you that this person's being deceitful. Curious. I am sure my allies will be very interested to hear what you have to say. He looks down and just tries to break eye contact with you. Hell yeah. I bet he does. Of course. (laughs) Awesome. I want to hear what's going on downstairs. Yeah, what do we want to do with breakfast? You want to roll egg check? (laughs) I guess, you know, Wink will just go up to the proprietor and... Two eggs, son of sat up. Bacon, and I've asked for it everywhere, but I've gotten a no. Still don't hurt to ask. Cheesy grits, if you got them. I don't know what a cheesy grits is at all. Yeah, I figured you wouldn't. I'm sorry, bud. Oh, no worries. Bacon and eggs will do fine, then. The rest of your request, I can absolutely honor that. Not a problem. You got any uh, fish on the menu? This early in the morning, not well. Oh, takes a look at you. Yeah, that tracks. Okay. Let me see what I can cook up. I can make you a grouper omelet. Sounds wonderful. Grouper omelet. I haven't made one of those in a minute. Oh, well, not even a problem. Not even a problem. What's your name, friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name's, uh, my name's Bruno. It's good to meet you. We're much obliged for your hospitality, Bruno. What kind of room is this? You're in the tavern area, right? You went downstairs? Just like a regular old tavern? You order food at the tavern area. There's no, like, restaurant section of this inn. No, I know. I just... Yeah, yeah. Tables? We got tables? Yeah, you can sit at a table. Yeah. You'd order right. your food at the bar, but it's pretty empty in here. It's the morning. All right. All right, you all eat eggs. Sit and eat in silence. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I suppose we did our RP in last night, so we'll just eat our <laughs> eggs in silence. <laughs> Is there anything you do want to talk about while you eat eggs? Otherwise, I will allow you to all enjoy your eggs peacefully, and then you can go to your carriage. I think Wink is a bit of a quiet eater. They're focused pretty much on eating. They were taught to not talk with their mouthful, so... Jib is a loud eater. It doesn't mean he's talking. He's just making a lot of noise eating. He's clinking his silverware. He's chewing with his mouth open. The, how's the grouper? I was... Uh, Actually, pretty good. Alright. <laughs> you know, this far inland, it's hard to find a good cut of fish, but they seem to have done it. Yeah, this one sure does uh, hit the mark. Anyway, you all successfully eat breakfast. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and the campaign can continue. Alright. Oh, good. Glad I don't have to make a con save there. <laughs> Starting no. the day with a short rest. Yeah, maybe if you had <laughs> demanded he try cheesy grits, and then you would have had to have made a con. <laughs> But you got your run of the mill. Uh, Bruno's good at eggs and bacon. We better go back upstairs. No argument here. Right, cool. I'm going to leave... How much do you think that would cost? Well, it's a grouper. It's catch of the day. I'm going to call that... It's a silver. It's a whole ass silver for the grouper. Okay. I'm going to leave like three silver on the table. Money bags. Well, you know. That's no, the way to be. I'm here for it. Yeah, Wink would leave a silver, thinking that they're probably overpaying for what they've got. Oh, I was paying for both of us with the three. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's great. That's a perfect amount. Love that. I appreciate it. Y'all let me get you next time, though. Oh, I will. You two are just the best. (laughs) All right, you go back upstairs. Has the situation developed at all? (laughs) Nope. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Everett is mean-mugging this soul, and this soul looks so destitute and just hopeless. Has been intimidated into high hell, and that's all you see. Their conversation would have come and gone. I think at this point, when you walk in, you would see me sharpening the blade of the axe. Jesus. (laughs) 
All right. Roll intimidation again with advantage. Sure. See if I can make this guy pee his pants or something. <laughs> it's literally what you're rolling for. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> well, don't tell me that. This is not a good roll. That's only an 11. Oh, he does not. His bladder remains intact. Yeah. Charisma's sort of the dump stat for Everett, yeah. despite his best efforts to be intimidating. Oh. All right, cool. Off-putting is a more accurate word. So yeah, again, the carriage should be waiting outside for you. Anything you want to do before you schlep this dude up and make your way for it? Let's, All right, just be let's on get to way, it then. then. Cool. One of you carries the, the prisoner bound, and you all make your way. You do see a carriage outside. The individual that is steering this carriage is inside of the stagecoach through like a front compartment, unlike most where you see the people kind of sitting outside. His hands are through a slit to handle the reins, and he slides a window open and just says, With Vetus, what gave us away? I've been expecting the three of you. I mean, not a lot of groups of three look like this, looking you up and down. Have a fourth, huh? No matter. Get in. We're going. About a day's travel. All right. I get in. He slams the window. You get in. It's a stagecoach. The area that you are in is not connected to his, but there is a little, like, window between him and the back. Almost like a limo. And you all begin your day-long journey with a new friend. What's pulling this carriage? Yeah, horses. How many? No, I don't don't like horses. I've never been a fan either. Two large brown bears are pulling it. Wait, sorry, what? Two large brown bears. Hold on. Hold on. I like that more. Wait. (laughs) I don't, the fucking horses are fucking overrated. I've had it with them. It's two large brown bears, and that's canon. And that's what you go to? It's just, just yeah. two fucking bears. All right, well, if we get in combat on the road, I guess they're going to take care of it. I was going to say, this yeah. carriage guy seems like I'm a bit of an asshole, but if they're a bear tamer, that, uh, that kind of explains, yeah. explains it, right? You, like, you should have led with, you walk out of the tavern and you see two large brown bears. It wasn't well, at that point, Jeffy God was still it, on Jeffy. horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. At that point, I was like, it doesn't, it's just a carriage. It's going to get you to, it's going to get you to the next sure. quest marker. And then you're like, what is it? And right. I was like, fuck, you know, fuck horses for once. And then I got on my bear kick. Anyway, it's two brown bears. Right. They don't talk to you. They're bears. So uh, how do you tame the bears? <laughs> the window slides open. Raised them that way. Window slides closed. You did personally, or? The window slides open and he gives a thumbs up and then the window slides closed again. I slide the window back open. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feed him? I mean, surely with that sort of mass, it'd be cheaper to feed a draft horse. Felbarosh, fishing camps. Pretty easy. Make sense? Yeah, they did have a lot of extra fish. I imagine hay's not that plentiful up here. The economics of Icewind Dale. <laughs> this is a strange place. <laughs> <laughs> You got any questions for the driver, Everett? I do not. <laughs> All right, let's get going. How long does it take for a bear to grow this size? <laughs> Look, I just drive the fucking thing, okay? I don't know how long it takes to raise a bear. I'm not friends with these shits, okay? Hang on, just a moment ago you said you raised them. All right, Wink, I think we're starting to bother the man. Sorry. He slams the window shut. <laughs> Without an insight check, you know you have not made a new friend today. <laughs> <laughs> the mechanics of this strange means of conveyance perplexes me. <laughs> I hope he still takes us to Bryn Shander. I think there's... A day later, you arrive at the shore with a firing squad awaiting you. <laughs> I flash back to... Honestly, I can't remember if it's Theros or Ravnica at this point, but Scala just going. And now you pay for the consequences of your foolish actions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember when it was either, but yes. So good. It wasn't Theros, it was when you took the cursed gold. Yeah. That's exactly yeah, that what was it was. Yes, it's a nat 20. <laughs> Fuck oh, you. Oh, good. No <laughs> consequences for your foolish actions. <laughs> to get some gold I don't need. <laughs> and there's the nat 20 of the night. Cool. Yes, and cursed Gron. Yeah, Gron took the, the brunt of those actions, actually. Anyway. I stare over prisoner. I would have put him across from me in the carriage. Figures. After this bear nonsense settles for a while. It is time you start talking. His eyes avert from you and look to Wink, who maybe he suspects is a little more kind and caring and understanding. What would you like to know? Well, let's start with your name. Isaac. I do not know my birth name. My taken name is Yilin Briar. Isaac, are you working alone or do you have accomplices? It is just me. It has always been me. Well, that makes it easier. I look to Everett <laughs> with a side eye of... Do you believe what he's saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead and blow on that D20, because I know you got an insight in the chamber you can't wait to throw. I'm getting out the blue one. Here we go. 
That is a 21. He <laughs> seems to be telling the truth. I nod from beneath my hood at Wink. All right. How'd you come by those explosives? I took them from inside the mine. How'd you get into the mine without anyone seeing you? That part was easy enough. It's an open hole in a cavern. Anybody can walk in. But I suppose if I had, it wouldn't have been much of a fuss. All right, let's skip to the good part. What is it you want? I'm afraid this part is not so good. It's money. Specifically, Fel Barosh's money. How does killing miners and possibly yourself get you money? I did not mean to do what I did. It was an accident. I didn't know they would be there. It was a mistake. Didn't know who would be there? The miners? Yes. In a mine? During the working day? Something's not adding up here. <laughs> I've been surveying this mine for quite some time. In fact... Oh, excuse me, I didn't realize you were an expert. I may not be on a payroll, but what I do... You can approach this kind of work with some professionalism. If you plan to steal, you should probably know what you're stealing from. This is the diligence that I hold myself to. So it's just money, then? It's Fail Barosh's money. Fail Barosh the company or Fail Barosh the guy? We could debate all day about whether or not that is the same thing, but I suppose to answer your question directly, the company. All right, I just may be a simple soul, but it's not quite adding up here. Why don't you specifically, and without any of this doublespeak, Tell us what your intended plan was. Debating if I want to make you roll persuasion for this. Okay. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have you do it. Okay. 18. All right, cool. It is to bring a natural order to things. I come from Lonelywood, and our people have been ravaged by Felbarosh. It's not right what happened. Enough people died, and one day I left, and I made a vow to take as much as I could from them and bring it back to the people of Lonelywood. I'm sifting through my notes. One sec. We have heard this before from Nimsy. Nimsy the cookie person? I lean forward. Can you elaborate for us the goings-on in Lonelywood? What would you like to know? They have logging camps spread throughout town? What did they do there that set you on this path? Not too long ago, in a matter of one week, I had to say goodbye forever to six of my friends. They set up cutting routes in the forest that were dangerous. We told everyone we could that we could not continue the work without risking our lives. They did not listen to us. As we continued to ravage the forest, the forest responded in kind. It wasn't too long after, people were just showing up dead. There is a group of people that live in the woods. Some say it's an old wives' tale, but it wasn't. We knew it wasn't. Do you think a company like Felborosh can be convinced of an old wives' tale? Can be told to stop working? Can be told to take less money? We were slaughtered. Some of us wanted to go back into the forest and make war with these people that live there. But it was not the root of the problem. The root is Felborosh. Everything that is poison in Icewind Dale comes from Felborosh. I thought to myself, if someone could take enough from them, sell it, repurpose it, perhaps Lonelywood is no longer in need of Felborosh at all. And I could save what few of my friends I had left. So you were after the Wraithasite, then, not money. Everything is money, is it not? But to answer your question, yes. Certainly more valuable than fish, and a far bit closer than Cad Deneval, huh? So, Isaac, how did it end up that these miners got caught in your explosion? I had been surveying the mines for some time, several days. I should have been smarter. I had overheard them. The Union, gone. I should have known it was a matter of time before they'd begin being overworked, just like we were, and that their normal schedule would be disrupted in favor of production, in favor of money. I thought they'd be gone. I thought they'd be enjoying a meal, telling stories, planning their evenings, and I was wrong. Now why'd you attack us when you saw us? I didn't know who you were. I presumed someone from Fel Barosh. I felt cornered. What was I to do? Where was I to go? Eventually you'd find me. I figured better to come after three of you than the old town. Mm. Did you practice that story all night? You can roll and say. <laughs> That's a four. Uh, I look to both of my companions. I will also roll insight. <laughs> 21. I got a nat 20 plus 6. You can tell that Isaac is saying these words at a pace and in a way that he's thought about what he's going to say to all of you for a while. So what is it you're not telling us? That eventually I want to leave Icewind Dale and that roll persuasion. Can I roll intimidation instead? How do you want to go about doing that? You got to tell me that and then I'll give it. Jib is going to kick the door of the carriage open. Oh, careful there. Wouldn't want to fall out, would you? Oh, jeez. You get advantage for that flavor. Hell yeah. That's good because the first roll was better than the second roll. That's a 10. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Oh. oh. I know. Fuck. Every cool moment gets ruined. 
I hate this. I, I hate know. this. Jim's just too friendly to be intimidating, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I have proficiency in intimidation. Oh, no! Isaac will look at you and say, There is more I can tell you, but... And looking at the open door, I heard you this morning. You're taking me somewhere. Showing up empty-handed may not be in your favor. Also, how fast do bears run? Where, like, he would be injured being thrown out of the carriage. <laughs> I don't know, Jeppy. You tell us. Bears can run pretty fast. They can run pretty fast. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, is there anything else you'd like to say? I'm going to grab him by his I bindings. I fucking do it. Here we go. And shove his head out the open door. Roll intimidation with advantage. You got it. Grizzly bears can have top speeds of up to 35 <laughs> miles an hour quite comfortably. <laughs> All right. Silently, as I do this, I roll a 19. Cool. That'll do it. Okay. Okay, please bring me back in. You've made your point. I leave him there for like a minute. Yeah, you do. And then I throw him back in the chair. Try again. I will not stop until I can bring closure and comfort to my people in Lonelywood and until I can leave. To that end, Tourmaline will not be the last place I go. And it wasn't the first. Oh, wasn't it now? What I said about Kerdin of all, half true. I have been there before. I may or may not have stolen from their storehouse. But what sent me to Tourmaline was this talk of valuable ores. I can promise you I killed no one. In Kerdenival. That seems suspicious to anyone else. What makes you different than these black sword? Hmm? How do we know you are not simply cast out from their number? You can choose to believe me or not. All I can tell you is what I know and what I am. And what I am is someone that spent far too long working for Felborosh. One more person broken by their grip and selfishness. I believe you, Isaac. But it remains to be seen what we're going to do about this problem. It is for you to decide, clearly. Holding up his bindings, showing you that you are in fact in control, and accepting that fate. Alright, Jib's moral compass is going to ping a little bit. I don't know if turning him in is the right thing to do here. This doesn't seem like it's related to the murders in any way, and they're going to eat him alive. This guy's got nothing left. He's acting out of desperation. I have to agree with you. But if he's going to be an amateur, run around getting innocent people hurt, I don't feel great about just letting him loose. Well, now that's a good point. I'm not making eye contact with Everett. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remind us, when we arrived in Cardenaval, were we informed about anything happening in Lonelywood as far as people being killed? Or was our information just contained to that murder incident in Care of Denival? So what you learned in Care Denival was just specific to Care Denival. Mm. Your player character wouldn't know this probably without maybe asking Isaac information around where Lonelywood is, but it is one of the places that was circled on Kessa's map. Right. I think you had told us okay. Curious. When you say it's about a day's journey, are you talking about a traveling day or 24 hours? You're going to be sleeping in this carriage with this person, so get comfortable. There's some good bears. (laughs) Yeah, they're good bears. They don't (laughs) stop. One thing I can say for certain, I look up towards Isaac. If you are to be let go from your current situation and we cross paths again, I do not think my comrades will be able to stop what would happen next. Your mission. I say as sarcastically as ever can. Maybe noble. Maybe just. But your actions have proven, as Wink says, to be only foolish, naive, that of a child. Surely you cannot realistically expect to accomplish such lofty goals by yourself. Perhaps not, and I'm sure I will make more mistakes. But someday, the people will know they are worth more than what they've been given. Someday it may not just be me. I don't imagine you're the only person that feels this way. I can promise you that I am not. So what my friend Everett said was right. You're being childish. You saw that there was other people around you feeling the same way, but you're too proud to go to your neighbors who are hurting from the same thing and get them on board with your plan to take back what belonged to you. I suppose the three of you have no regrets in your life. I suppose the three of you have handled everything perfectly. Oh, I got plenty of regrets. I'm six to three years old. I got lots of time for regret. But you know how I made it to six to three? I learned something real young. You know what happens to heroes in this world? They end up dead. Correct. You know that, and yet, here you are, on your own, acting like you're some kind of hero. As Wink 
brings that up, and Isaac responds with that answer. Everett reflexively scratches at his neck. As you do that, actually, can you roll me a d4? Okay. That is a two. All right, cool. On a two, at the mention of heroism, bringing up these ideas of what it means to be a hero and to kind of fall on your sword and be a martyr, you scratch at your neck, and in your mind, you start to hear shouting, yelling, screaming, anguish, and your field of view is clouded with a vision of overhead a group of people, probably about 12 to 15 people. You can't really make them out. It's just figures in a large field. You see about all but four of them reach their arm out to the other four that are on the other side of this semicircle, and then just a massive blizzard overtakes this vision, and then you're brought back to the carriage. Ever takes a deep, cold, raspy breath. Is any of that landscape familiar? It is familiar to you in that the last time you had one of these visions with the feather, it appeared to be in a large field of snow. Okay, but nothing that I've seen outside of a vision. I mean, you've seen lots of fields of snow. Right. There's no distinguishing feature here that you'd say, I've seen that patch of snow. Okay. After all this talk, though, Isaac crosses his arms and just kind of sulks and looks to the side towards the door of the stagecoach. And you can tell he's shutting down or is shut down at this point. Just a foolish kid. How old is Isaac? Look. Probably like mid to late 30s. Like this is someone that's been in the workforce for a while. Okay. Not kind of foolish kid vibes. This is someone that should know better, but has probably been weathered and worn by just life circumstances. They're not acting of sound mind all the time. Jib is like six times that age. So <laughs> the comment stands, even though Jib looks younger yeah. than this person. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Wink has more to say, but seeing how Isaac has sort of shut down at their chastisement, Wink will just take a breath. <sighs> no, I'm sorry. I don't know what you've been through. I understand desperation. You gotta think about what you're doing. You really gotta think about it. Isaac does not avert his gaze from the stagecoach door. He just is acting a little petulant. You can tell Isaac's listening. Yeah. They're listening to you, but he's probably too proud to continue the conversation. Wink will just let the carriage roll along for a while then. Okay. The carriage rolls on. Is there anything else the three of you would like to discuss? Otherwise, it'll be a long ride, and eventually you'll make your way into Bryn Shander and towards the Vitus encampment or building. This carriage, did it have any markings on it when it pulled up? Nothing discerned about it. It was a pretty run-of-the-mill carriage. If you're wondering if it was branded with any fail barrage or Vetus yeah. things, it was a pretty run-of-the-mill carriage. Best you could tell, the person running this carriage certainly works for one of those two entities, but this was probably a rented or leased thing, or even if it's not like not important enough for them to brandish their logo on it. Okay. Is the driver wearing a uniform? You couldn't really see, because again, all you saw was <laughs> arms sticking out and then his profile of his face. Uh, all right. Uh, also, a uh, point of order. I would like to request that we just call it a barrage from now on. I oh missed God. that earlier, and I'd like to submit it now. Mm. Oh, God. Barrage? barrage? Yes. In lieu of Bear what? carriage. Ba- oh, barrage. Damn it. Oh, my God. Okay, barrage. Yes. Okay. Barrage. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I will do my best to remember that because I'm here for that mm. distinction. The boys back home are never going to believe this. They got carriages pulled by bears. In line with all of the faces that I've seen since I hit level three, I get a good look at this guy's face. The cat. The barrage driver. The barrage driver. Okay. (laughs) You take in his face, and if you happen upon him in the future, you may remember what he looks like. Not why I'm doing that. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) You look at his face for other reasons. Moving on. The other reason you look at a face. I can think of a few, but... All right. Well, Jib's going to notice that the albatross is still following. Hmm. That's awesome. So what are we going to do here? With regards to what? Isaac. Oh, mm. we did tell Kessa we were bringing a prisoner. No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't. Right. We did not. But that barrage driver saw us get on with one. So if we don't get off one... We could just tell him he gave us a little bit of trouble. Had to let him go, so to speak. Got the wrong guy, maybe? We'd have to make it look convincing. <laughs> Love where this is going. <laughs> Wink, at this point, pulls the red scarf that they've had around their neck up over their nose and ties it behind their face so all you can see under their hat is their eyes. Pretty much in line with Everett's normal face. I just, real quick point of order. Earlier you were asking this barrage driver questions and he was able to just respond. Are you whispering this dialogue? Yes, I thought I lowered my tone so that it sounded like I was speaking softly, but if you'd like me to make a stealth check? Yeah, I would like you to do that. Absolutely. Okay. 
Thank God I'm a halfling. That's a nat one. Oh God. <laughs> okay. Oh no. So thirteen. All right. I got a twenty-two. Okay. I forget who said what pieces of dialogue, so that sucks. Everett hasn't said much so far, but I do have an 18 stealth. All right, as you do this, wink, the carriage window slides open. Uh Uh-oh. You know, I was going to let you kick the shit out of yourself to make it convincing, but listen, you can go one way or the other on this, but I can't not tell my employer what we're up to here. Really? That's like part of your job? Like it's in your contract? You have to tell your employer about what Tell my employer what's going on? Yeah, I owe them a little bit more than I owe you, buddy. You don't just drive the carriage? Wow, yeah. That's the way to win me over. Yeah, I just drive a carriage. Well, we all have our jobs. I used to just haul rope. Yeah, you have your job too. And it looks like you're trying to get out of that job. Not really. I sized this carriage driver up. Do they look tough? You can't really see much. You see, like, the head, maybe his bust, not even, like, just shoulders. Kind of skinny, actually. Arms are a little big, you know, what with smacking bears around with some reins, but uh, otherwise. Wink keeps the now bandana over their face and just pulls themselves up to be eye-to-eye with this bearage driver. You wouldn't be eye-to-eye because the bearage driver is a good bearage driver and looks straight ahead, but you'll be at eye level if that's what you're at trying to do. At eye level with the bearage <laughs> Right. <laughs> He's a professional. Right? I had no complaints about your driving, by the way. Now, there's a lot of ways this can go. <laughs> oh my god. You know, as far as I've experienced up here, these roads are dangerous places. Who knows what could happen to a barrage on its way from Tourmaline to Bryn Shander. Everett begins unwrapping his longbow. Might be not everybody made the trip safe. Sounds like you're rolling intimidation and you're giving the help action. Yep. Okay, go for it. So let me pose you a question, my friend. Is your tongue worth your job? 24. Holy shit, (laughs) it's a tie. It's a tie. What? Yeah, rolled a nat 20 with a mod 4. What's Wink's mod? My mod's plus 5. So that wins, right? It's up up to to you. you. Alternatively, you can roll again, but those are usually two ways to go. Or you go with a different roll. I might have us roll again, what I will not entertain is after that dialogue, we're not doing a different roll. (laughs) <laughs> that is deeply <laughs> intimidation. You want to square off again? See how it goes? Let's do it. <sighs> Same 24. Okay. What? Nice. This rainbow died, rolled Hell two yeah. 19s in a row. Hell all right. yeah. Nice. All right. 17. So this one, not getting rolled off again. You all are pretty fucking stupid since I'm your ride out, but I'm pretty fucking smart and don't want myself to get hurt. You do what you want. What would happen if you showed up without us? Why would that be a thing? I plan on bringing you to Bryn Shander. Exactly. I think we're on the same page here. Look, you can do whatever you think you need to do here. And I'll keep my mouth shut. But what I will not allow is for this guy to get off this carriage anywhere but Bryn Shander. You don't have to take him to Kessa, but people saw him get on. I'm not dropping him off in the middle of the fucking wilderness, all right? When you get to Bryn Shander, he will stop somewhere and you can let Isaac off somewhere else in Bryn Shander. But you can't let him off in the middle of okay. it. Is he telling us that, that that's the plan? He, that's what he's saying he's willing to do. People saw him get on? Well, I don't know. I can't guarantee they didn't. And that's my job on the line. And I'm not doing that for you. You can threaten me however you want. It's this, or you can kick the shit out of me and walk. You know anyone in Bryn Shander? I say to Isaac. Why would I go to the belly of the beast? Well, pretty good place to slay the beast, you know. But you didn't hear that from me. The driver scoffs as you insinuate slaying his potential employer. <laughs> Hey, I rolled a 22 on my stealth check earlier. (laughs) All right, you're good, you're good, you're good. The driver has no reaction. Perhaps. Maybe you've all helped me more than you've harmed me. Time shall tell. What time of day is it? At this point, the conversation has kind of ebbed and flowed, pockmarked with awkward silences and childish grunts from Isaac. It's probably close to dusk at this point. All right. I'm going to knock on the window. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend earlier. Your driving skills. You're doing a heck of a job up there. How much longer do you reckon it is until we reach Bryn Shander? You'll wake up and be at your destination. No sooner. All right. Yeah. Jib's just going to pull down his ear flaps and get comfy. Anyone else want to simmer in the warm broth of moral dilemma? Or are we feeling good about the plan and want to <laughs> call it an evening in this tiny-ass carriage? I'm going to go over to Isaac. I'm going to try and slip him a dagger. Sounds like we'll be getting into Bryn Shander around near morning, so... Real quick, Scala, you failed your last stealth. Yep. Can you roll again if you want to do this? Yeah, yeah, I would. It's uh, another nat one. Yeah, d- yeah you halfling. Need, you're going to need this one. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Eleven. Yeah. Unfortunately, Mr. Barrage Boy... 
rolled a nat 20. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's how that goes. All I've said so far is, sounds like we'll be getting into Bryn Shander around near morning. Right, right. So, so at this point, I guess you see up ahead that the barrage coach turns his head back to listen in, and you know he can hear what you're saying. So now you have the option to measure your words very carefully. Okay. Right. And I will continue to say, I can't be responsible for what happens to you after we get there. So I encourage you to think very carefully about what it is you do when we get there. And I will slip him this dagger so that perhaps he has the option to cut his bonds and mm-hmm. make his own way. Since you're doing this discreetly and you may want to just throw it into like his cloak or something, I'm going to have you roll sleight of hand on this. That was what I was getting at. 18. All right, you do it. I would say you probably would know best to put it in his cloak mm-hmm. for it being discreet and on an 18 you're able to do okay. that. And that is what I did. All right. You may think I owe you a debt of gratitude, but I do not. It's just one more example of how none of us are in charge of our own fate. You simply serve as a reminder. <laughs> and he sulks into the distance again. Look, Andy can't be the only edgelord in this campaign, all right? I'm doing it for Andy. <laughs> Sorry, that was Wink in character laughing oh, at, oh, this, oh. at this prick. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't remember who said it. Might have been my old friend Yama. We are radically free beings. Every point in our life, there are choices. Not all of those choices are good. Sometimes... Some of those choices are impossible, but there are always choices. Isaac looks at you, pauses, lightly shakes his head, and looks away. Okay. If nothing else, the day and night passes, and you all wake up in a much different location, which is a bustling, albeit still snowy, city, and you know that you are in Bryn Shander. You see alleys and rows of buildings and houses on all sides and all directions. Early, early daylight is breaking, but people are still out and about. At some point, Mr. Barrage Boy stops very close to an alley and just says, the door's as close as I can get it. Get him out of here. Let's go. He didn't leave on his own? What do you mean? (laughs) I mean, the fucking guy's bound. Are you going to open the door for him at least? That's why I gave him the dagger, so he could free himself. Well, I thought, I don't know, for some reason I thought you had planned to do that after he left the carriage. I don't know why. That's what I kind of read from that situation. Sorry. That was not... My intention. I mean, if this guy uh, doesn't get that... He really uh, is inept. And isn't going to free himself before we reach our final destination. Oh, okay. What a goddamn rookie. Uh, that's on him. Okay. No, he frees himself and he gets the fuck out of here. Okay. So. This is the state of activism in Icewind Dale. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, yeah. Goddamn Gen Zers. He's out of here. You can all wave fond farewells to your new bestie, Isaac. I am going to cast Hunter's Mark on him. <laughs> okay. As he's walking away. Cool. I'm going to watch him leave with my bird eyes. All right. Awesome. He goes down the alley. The door shuts <laughs> by one of you, and you get the fuck on with your lives. <laughs> Some <laughs> random ass wipe with Hunter's Mark <laughs> alone in Bryn Shander. How long does Hunter's Mark stay active? Just for my own curiosity. An hour. Oh, okay, cool. Great. You roll on. Making your way through more streets, eventually you happen upon a somewhat recently put together barracks or situation area. I don't want to say room. It's propped together by some beams and it's relatively cobbled together, but it's a large structure. You can tell even from the outside, there are probably multiple rooms to this encampment, but it is definitely a propped up Vetus encampment for the purpose of supporting this Operation Frostbite. And you roll up, and as you do, you actually see Kessa as you park. Can't say this has been my favorite fucking ride, but thank the three of you, I guess. I enjoyed it. Never seen bears like that before. Just ask him one more question. I can't imagine he'd like it. (laughs) So, uh, where are you going now? Get the fuck out of my carriage. All right. I'm sorry, get the fuck out of my what? (laughs) You clean your ears, and he definitely said bearage. (laughs) Everett's already gone. (laughs) Can I pet your bear? Wink flicks some earwax on the ground unceremoniously, reaches into their purse, and hands the barrage driver a gold piece. I know y'all probably already got paid, but you've been such an understanding host. I appreciate it. He flicks the coin out of the front side of the barrage, not allowed, and then closes the window. You can go grab your coin outside if you want. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Strange custom to tip co-workers. Not so strange for co-conspirators. Kessa sees Everett, who's on his way already, and says to the three of you, You've arrived. Great. Good. Let's go. Come on. Follow me. And she takes you deeper into the encampment. It's good to see you again, Kessa. She just keeps walking. Uh, (laughs) 
you notice as you go through, and I'm not making your all perception because like she's just fucking booking it. This same material that's on the outside is what's making the walls on the inside. You see various rooms and different people meeting there and some people doing bookkeeping. You see maps with yarn, classic conspiracy theorist bullshit on some of these walls that have been propped up. She rounds a right turn and you know, you're in a large room and as you get there, you see three other people sitting in this room with her. A very, very large in frame, like tall and wide human with a huge scar across their neck. They're bald, no other real distinguishing features, very stern, serious look. You see a equally large half-orc who is on the other side of the table standing up uh, overlooking a short, crew-cut, brown-haired gentleman, human, and they all just kind of look over to the three of you as Kessa comes in and sits at the same side as the large man with the scar across his neck. Extends her arm and beckons you to sit. I sit. I stand on a chair, unless there's a... A little booster seat, if it makes you more comfortable, they can get one for it. No, or like a stool, you know? Like if there's a like a bar stool that I could... Actually, I would argue that like a lot of these are kind of cheap industrial site stools. Like That's actually probably what they're using around here for seating. Perfect. Everett sits. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for coming on short notice. I do appreciate it, but I also expected it. Anyway, your end-of-day report at Tourmaline was quite troubling, but it's no matter. We have something here for you. I suppose it's time and best you meet the person behind all this and the reason for your employment. This is Val Barash. She gestures to the short brown-haired man who is kind of towered over by this half-orc. Pleasure to meet you. My name's Jib. Uh, yes, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Have you been investigating my businesses? Well, yeah. Quite troubling occurrences that have been happening as of late, and I appreciate it very much. What have you found? Oh, more questions than answers, I'm afraid. Well, now you know why we hired you, huh? My notes are awful. Someone else want to take this? Wink smiles, very friendly, and then does a big... <laughs> as you do that, yeah. the half-orc behind Failbarosh uncrosses its arms and kind of just... Leans forward a little bit and fail steadies drug. It's not a problem. Pardon, pardon. Rural custom. There's not much to tell so far. Seems there's some cult. Goes by what's called the Black Sword. And they were killing some folk up in Cairdenval. And it seems that they were receiving Wraith Sight as a payment for committing these murders. Now that Wraith Sight, what's being taken from over in Tourmaline, some of it is getting mishandled, sent off to some place called the Isle. Failbrush looks up at the half-orc. It's that fucking grunt. Looks back to you for more information. Well, far as I could tell, well, far as Everett could tell, Everett's got a good eye for people. I just sort of look over to the three of them as Wink is continuing. This was happening without Grant's knowledge, and as soon as we brought it to Grant's attention, he intimated that he would investigate the matter further to try and identify a responsible party. I didn't insinuate that it was Grant's orchestration, but it is Grant's lack of management. You can understand my disappointment regardless. I have dead bodies and missing product to account for. <sighs> I apologize. I am taking this out on you. <laughs> I think Grant is somewhat limited in his ability to mitigate the consequences of what I would see as a deficiency in compensation. Hold on one moment on that thought. What? Garen, pointing to the large figure across the way. Can you hand me the... Garen hands Fail a piece of paper. Yes. Fail snatches it from his hand, looks at it quizzically. Ah, that, that does seem to be a problem. Clearly, this contract does not state for you to give me advice on how to run my fucking business. <laughs> What I am contracted to do is investigate. And as an investigator, what I do is link cause to effect and present the causal chain of events. Now, your people were getting killed in Cairdenval. That's an effect. And the cause of that was the Black Sword cult was receiving Wraith Sight from an unknown party to perform these killings. Now, the cause of that was they were receiving Wraith Sight from another unknown party at a location we believe to be the Isle. Now, the cause of that was Wraith Sight was being smuggled out of Crimson Glimmer Mines to the Isle. And the cause of that was someone was in such financial straits that they could be easily bribed to undertake this smuggling operation. Cause, effect. Scala, why don't you roll me persuasion this time? Sure. The bard. <laughs> See how the bard does with persuasion. 27 is how the bard does with persuasion. Hell yeah. Yes. All right, cool. 
Felbrosh gets up out of his chair and comes over to your side of the table and squats down to be at eye level with you. I also didn't roll because Felbrosh can't roll. I heard them 27. I don't say this often. I'm sorry. The reality is that one can't help as feel as though they're losing control. I look around me. People are dead. People are upset. People are finding other ways to get by at my expense. The part of me that has run a business for so long so successfully thinks, how could this be possible? It can't. But the facts as you've laid them out before me are undeniable. So I apologize. Sometimes it's time to shut up. Am I right? And he goes and sits back in his chair. You notice, without any kind of perception, across the table, Garen is like fucking shocked. (laughs) (laughs) I guess roll insight on that if you want. Sure. 18 insight. Phil Barash is not an apologizer. As someone that runs a corporation, not someone to say, oh, shit, you are right. Let's do things your way. And Garen, who has now run a contract with him, is like, what? What just happened? (laughs) Simple causality, my friend. Simple (laughs) winkality. Yeah. Yeah, he sits down at the chair. Garen makes that face and then composes himself and looks over to you, Wink. Well, your efforts in Tourmaline were not fruitful. You can see it strains him to speak. It is clear that you are useful to our endeavors on this project. Kessa... We have your next assignment. We need to repurpose you for something much more important. Does that come with uh, any kind of, you know, raise in compensation? (laughs) Phil shoots daggers for eyes at Garen. Garen steadies, like, chill, chill. And then looks to Kessa and kind of gives a nod. We'll make sure that for this one you are properly compensated. Much appreciated. You can start by compensating us at all. Yeah, I didn't want to be a bother, but yeah, we haven't been paid yet other than just to cover incidentals. And You know, I'm part of a union back home, not used to negotiating my own pay. And Okay, yeah, we will. Yeah, that's now. fine. Listen, we'll get this settled. Okay, let me go get somebody. I'll just find out what we... Listen, I do not want to be here any longer than I have to be. What do you owe them? But I don't care. Here, he throws each of you 20 gold. Fucking snatch that out of the air. All right. If there's any more outstanding, I'm sure the two of you gesturing his chin to Kessa and Garen will take care of it. So what's this new assignment? To be clear, we consider the matter at hand unresolved, but this has to take priority. I consider it unresolved as well. As I was going through those causal links, you might have noticed there were a few unknowns, and I would like to fill in those blanks. We intend for you to, and look forward to it. But in the meantime, tomorrow, there is to be a debate among two candidates for Speaker of Bryn Shander. We would like for the three of you to attend, and yes, allow me. I think this is perhaps out of your comfort zone. What we need from Vetus is assistance. There are two candidates. One is Tregan Rorick, the other, Roman Felwind. As I mentioned before, I have quite a bit on my plate, and though I never want to admit it again, my grip may be slipping. People may be getting hurt as a result. I could be doing better. But to do that, I think I will need some assistance at the highest level. Tragen is that person. We need tomorrow to go well for Tragen. Can we trust the three of you to attend and see to it that the crowd feels the proper way about our boy? Mm. Well, I suppose I don't know how the law works at all up here. Uh, Is this legal? This is a kindness compared to some of the other elections. Well, I do like kindness. I feel like there's something being left unsaid here. Because if I'm any old soul in Bryn Shander, what three outsiders think of some political candidate is not going to sway my mind one way or the other. What's it you're really asking us to do? You underestimate yourselves. And besides, there's much more you can do than just a few inspiring words. I'd posit that Tregan may win without any assistance. However, the contract as writ extends to assist Felbarosh in normalizing our operations. This falls under that purview. Whether your efforts yield fruit or not, I could care less. But this is important to me, and I need it done. The political ramifications of this are going right over Jib's head, and <laughs> he's kind of nodding along. He's <laughs> yes. willing to do a job for pay right now, and is not overthinking it. Clearly, you care enough that you are willing to pay the three of us to potentially intimidate a voting audience. Ah, how much exactly is this worth to you? And he sort of tosses the coin purse that he was just handed up in the air as he says this. Why don't you hand me that coin purse? Drog walks up and holds his hand out. Everett gives it to him. Drog tosses it to Felbarash. Felbarash rifles through, places more coins in there, hands it to Drog. Drog hands it back. You can go ahead and take a look. I do. There is 300 gold in there. Everett stows it in his many layers. You were right to put that away. It is not for sharing. That is for each of you. 
The other two of you. Come get it. Okay, Jib does. Problem, Wink? I just don't feel like this is the right job for me. Like I said, we don't have speakers or elections where I'm from. You know, the old lord dies and the new lord takes their place. And if someone rolled up into town and gave their opinion on one lord or another, that wouldn't matter pig shit in a swamp to me. I guess all I'm saying is I'm still not sure exactly what it is you are expecting me to do. Your deductive reasoning has struck a chord with me. I'm rather impressed, and it's a shame to hear this, but I understand where you're coming from. But perhaps, Wuggins, this isn't the job for you. But I admire what you've done for this investigation so far, and I want you involved. I really do. I do. I think good will come of it. I think good will come of it for both of us. I'd ask you join your friends here. Hear out both candidates. Get involved in the political process. But you can get involved my way and receive compensation or just be a listener. I think both will do you good. One will also do me good. All I can do is hope that you'll agree when you hear what Dragon has to say. All right. Sorry. Oh, well, this is just somewhat alien to me. So I'm just at a loss for how I can be of service to you, Mr. Barosh. I apologize today. Today is a day for strangeness. When's the vote? In a few weeks' time. It's all you're going to be hearing about on the streets of Bryn Shanda, I'm afraid. So how will you know if we did a good job tomorrow? Internal polling data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was literally about to like try and like, fantasy talk around that idea, but I mean, basically okay. he's gonna he's gonna explain a little bit about like how people take sentiment and like go around and ask afterwards and like get a general feel for like who won the night, and he will be closely linked to that information. He explains all that in his voice eloquently. Okay. Oh. All right. Anyway, Kessa jumps in. Here's the location. She hands you a piece of paper with just some street names written on it. But again, the debate is tomorrow. You are free to stay here as long as you want. In the meantime, we have already paid for your lodging. The place you are looking for, whenever you decide to turn in tonight, is called the North Look. Otherwise, we expect a report after the debate is concluded. Great. Very well. Well, my pockets are 300 gold heavier. Where can I get a drink around here? Oh, well, you do have options. You could go to the North Look. There's the Foaming Mug. There's the Loose Knot. I think those are the three main areas that you could get a nice spot of respite if you're looking for a drink and some company. Loose Knot. Sounds like my flavor of bar. (laughs) And the North Look was the name of the hotel? That's where you have your lodgings. All three of them are tavern and inns. Yep. Okay. All right. Pleasure seeing you again, Kessa. Uh Nice to meet you, Mr. Barash. (laughs) A pleasure. And I also nod to Garen and Drog as well. They don't use words so much. They nod back, though. Does Garen's scar ping anything for Everett? For Everett specifically, no. It's a scar from probably a combat. All right. If there's nothing else... The loose knot, then. Cool. Yeah, you can all make your way towards the loose knot. It's middle of the day. It is a city that you are supposed to be in, and you are working for the largest security firm in the world. Everett, you do not need to roll investigation, sleight of hand, stealth, insight, or anything. You're just citizens in the city. You can move about freely. So no survival checks or anything of the sort. Again, just as a reminder, the North Look is where you will be lodging for the evening, but Loose Knot certainly will have its share of booze to be had if you all want to have a drink somewhere nearby and talk about what's going on. As we're walking, Everett will say to Wink, I feel like we find ourselves walking in circles with the same conversation. Wink, I can understand your hesitation in the matters of morality with these people, but when they are so eager to fill your pockets before the job is even done, my friend, well, how can one refuse? Like I just did back there. (laughs) Of course. And never keeps walking. It's not a very long walk to the loose knot, so at this point, you are at the door and you can open it up and it's a bar, bunch of people. What does the outside look like? This is the smallest of the three in town. So this kind of is quaint. It's got like one of those wooden signs, but one of the chains is off, so it's crooked and it says the loose knot, but the paint's kind of faded and chipped on the lettering. You see like one lattice designed window off on the side. It's all made of wood. Pretty standard roof. The roof is kind of dusted in snow. Quaint little place for sure. It's perfect. Yeah, you, you would like it. All right, I'm going to go inside. Cool. You go inside. You see six or seven tables in this room. You see a staircase that leads up. Based on the outside, there's probably not a lot of beds in this place. The upstairs is pretty damn small. Most of the tables have some people in it, usually two people. It's a pretty quiet bar right now because it's early in the day. Most people are working. You see a fellow sea elf behind the bar. 
cleaning glasses and taking a look, you know, raising the glass up and taking a look at it. Chatter's pretty quiet. You all can just walk up to the bar if you want. Okay, I'm going to say an elvish. Hail, friend. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just fine now. Isn't that great? What do you serve here? Oh, you know, the usual. Booze and stuff. We don't really have a kitchen, though. Uh, that's all right. I'm here for the booze. I'll take one booze, please. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Huh. In elvish, booze. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I know what that's code for, huh? Gives you a wink and then comes back with some sort of a green, glowy liquor of some sort. I notice that wink and then realize, ah, wink. Fancy a drink, wink? Wink smiles at Jib, declines their head a bit and says, well, maybe later. I'm not feeling in the most festive mood right now. Oh, I just figured we had so much to talk about. I always find it easier to talk over a drink. Anyway, bottoms up. I'm going to drink this green, glowing liquid. You recognize it as absinthe. Ah. <laughs> hey, oh, it Ooh. cleans your right up, doesn't it? Oh, yes. It's something. Oh, boy. That's good. It, it, is, it is good. Hey, why is it called the loose knot? Well, you know, uh, you, you have enough of that stuff there, and uh, your knot comes loose. Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> I hear that. Oh, I heard that. It used to happen to me all the time when I was hauling rope. Oh, boy. You haul rope? Well, I used to. I'll have another, please. Oh, you got it, buddy. How'd you get so far inland? What brings you all the way to Bryn Shander? Everett just leans his back against the bar as they begin having this conversation and scans the room. Well, you know, I was getting kind of sick of the clove hitches and bowline knots and, you know, do enough sheep bends over time and you kind of had enough of it already. Oh. Made my way down here trying to make my living not doing all that taut line hitch and fisherman knots and waters knots. All that stuff got real boring real quick. I assume story same for you. Jeffy pulled up the Wikipedia page <laughs> for knots. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the Wikipedia page. <laughs> um, no, I didn't do that much work. This is just the Google top result. <laughs> <laughs> you give me too much credit. <laughs> Types of knots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there they are. The square knot, the clove hitch, the bow line, the sheep bend, two half hitches, taut line hitch, fisherman's knot. You know. The use. As you two have that not very campaign relevant conversation. Not very. Not, uh, Alan, you can go ahead and make me a perception check. Alwyn? Not Alwyn. Alwyn? The planeswalker Alwyn? <laughs> I like the idea of Everett scanning the room for something important while that conversation is happening. So yeah. let's go ahead and cut over to Everett with a perception check. Okay. The water's not... That's a 23. Beautiful. On a 23, three or four of the tables are filled with like two to three people having a conversation. You notice one table has a male elf looking older in age, skin's a little more green, and he's just alone and he's just looking over a bunch of papers. With that perception check, can I sort of see, are they just letter-sized papers? Are they larger? Or It looks like he is looking over some notes. Oh, I don't think I got your name, friend. Oh, my name is Jory. Jory Palumbo. Jory Palumbo. Oh, Pleasure to meet you. My name's Jib. I have a feeling you'll be seeing me around here next few days. Oh, we love having you. Yeah. But, uh, big favor for me, pal, huh? Sure. Don't talk too much about rope. I'm kind of over it. Oh, that's a shame. Really frayed ends of sanity over here, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I'm taking a bit of a break from rope myself, but it always seems to find its way back in. Ain't that the truth, huh? Anyway, pleasure. I'm going to take my drink off the bar and go grab us a table. Talked about rope like it's fucking meth. (laughs) 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 I'm just taking a break from rope, you know? (laughs) But it always finds its way back in. (laughs) Oh, spoken Uh. like a true addict. So I figured we'd sit at a table here and and discuss, actually, like, what our plan is approaching this. It's the reason I brought us to this place. It wasn't just a... (laughs) This elf, he's not, like, got a Vetus uniform or anything, right? He's just a guy? Just a guy, from what you can tell. If Jib is going to lead us to a table, Everett will follow, but try and get close enough that I can try and see what this elf is working on. Yeah, I'll say you can make your way to a nearby table and take another glance, but I'll ask you to do another perception check as you do it. Actually, I'll treat this as investigation because you're looking specifically at like some paper. That's a 15, but I'm going to blow a uh, knowledge of the past on this for a 18. On an 18, you're able to just see it looks like paragraphs upon paragraphs across different pages. You see at the top of all of these pages says talking points. Mm. Yeah, you see a lot of like notes off on the side that are addressed to a Roman. Once we sit down, I discreetly gesture towards the figure and say, uh, That elf there seems to have a strange fascination with Roman Felwind. 
Or at least all of those papers which suggest so. Could be working with them. Well, but one way to find out. Wink goes right over to this elf. Right. Everett will listen from afar. Patty, what you drinking? Just a water for now. I can't buy a courtesy water. I was not asking for a water. I'm telling you what I am drinking, friend. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure of another way to ingratiate myself with a stranger other than buy him a drink. You can play a song if you like, but it seemed like that would be a distraction. It would be quite a distraction, but I presume you have a question for me? Well, my company and I are all new in town, and noticed that you seem to be involved in all this election business, and I was figuring I might ask you some questions about that. Oh, what would you like to know? I work on behalf of Roman. I see, and uh, I'm sorry... What's, um, what's Roman's agenda? You sound confused, friends, but that is the word for it. Good job. Roman believes in two things. That oral is real, but companies like Felbarosh can do everything they want to to try and get rid of oral. Rid our world of magic. But it will not work. That is one. And two, that no company should have such control over its people as Felbarosh does. Motherfucker. What? I said you motherfucker. What's that got to do with... Bryn Shander and the administration thereof. All I'm hearing about is Fel Barosh. A company like Fel Barosh has a way of inserting itself into everything, including democracy. When people have no choice and no means to create choice, what is left? It is people like him. I would encourage you to come to the event tomorrow and let Roman speak for himself, but to put it bluntly, it is time to take Fel Barosh and turn that into... Uh, he says it so much better than I do. But we are to take Felbarosh and turn it into a public utility to service the people. We bring back a union to keep us in check. Can we hear this conversation? This character is using this as an opportunity to tout his candidate. So like, is not keeping any of the secret at all. Right. right. And I will say this. The company Tregan keeps is Felbarosh. The company we keep is the union. If you know anything about the Ten Towns, I would hope that you'd know that we are on the right side of history here. Well, I don't know anything about all that. You seem very passionate about your candidate. What do you think's going to happen when you try to make this company a public utility? Well, when Roman first began speaking of this, there was a strong reaction. But that's people. Change is scary. However, this was before the union started to disappear. Public perception of this has changed, yeah? We have been the underdogs in this fight. Our ideas have been loved, but silently. But the majority is becoming more and more vocal. The tides are changing. And we may just have a shot at this. Well, thanks for indulging me. If you do ever become thirsty for something more than water, or you feel like you want a song, I'll be over there with my compatriots. How about this? After tomorrow, after all of this, he holds up the papers, I think I could very much use a drink. But let me earn it. Come tomorrow, hear what my good friend has to say. And then if you like it, show me by buying me a drink, eh? Well, I think we'll be there. He has a huge grin. Like, he's so grateful to have connected with someone about his candidate. Okay. I walk back to the table. Y'all hear all that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm thinking now this might not be the best place to talk. Jib sets down his empty glass and stands up from the table. To the north look, then? Very well. As you like it. Cool. You all make your way out, and Jory kind of yells out to Jib, Don't get too tied up now. Come back, you hear? Well, I'll be back. Don't worry, Jory. These fucking rope hugs. <laughs> God, you're terrible. <laughs> what can I say? I'm in a bind. Uh... <laughs> Yikes. You're going to be in a noose pretty oh, no. soon. <laughs> um, cool. You all easily make your way over to the North Look. You can head up to the counter if you want. You can tell the NPC who you are. <laughs> you can tell how important the NPC is because their name, <laughs> the first name is The and last name is NPC. <laughs> Hello, we're the party. You're expecting us. Hi, I am the NPC <laughs> that knows that you work for uh, a certain person that has paid for this lodging this evening. Your room is upstairs. The simulation is breaking down. <laughs> no, it shall continue without a hitch. Nice. And that, for any aspiring DMs, is how you hand wave content. All right, let's move on. We're upstairs. It's all good. Unless you all really want a name, I'll give you one. No, it's better this way. Yeah. Tomorrow, we'll get to know them. Tomorrow, Northy Lookman will identify themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why they call it the North Look. <laughs> You're all in your room. This is a much bigger inn, so you all have separate rooms here, but you can all convene in who's at a room and have the conversation. Well, they spared no expense. I go to Everett's room. That tracks. I gather Jib and I go to Everett's room. I was going to say, I go to Wink's room and there's no one there. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi, Jib. I was just headed to Everett's room. 
All right, we convene in Everett's room. The two of you find Everett staring <laughs> pensively out the balcony window. Out the balcony screen door. I'm just, for some reason, I get, like, Holiday Inn vibes from this place. No, I'm here for it. You have your balcony. Cool. Is this a good time? Of course. <laughs> I think Felborash's problem is quite transparent, don't you? Seems that way. And I'm thinking I'm starting to see why Vetus was brought up here. Yeah, you seem to have a problem with this, Wink. Well, I do have a bit of a problem with it, because let's just say hypothetically, Roman wins this election. Okay. Do you think Fael Barosh is the type of person who's going to quietly and peaceably part with his sources of income? No, I suppose not. See, that was something I was wondering, is uh, if Roman does win... What force is going to push this change? There doesn't seem to be much law enforcement up here. I suppose Vetus would be enforcing that. And Vetus works for Felborash. For the time being. Look, I'm not going to be some armed goon who comes in and opposes the will of the people. The way I see it is we're here now, and these sorts of things are going to happen here in Icewind Dale, whether we're here or not. Since we're here, we're taking part. It's the way things happen here. Anyway... That's all I ever heard about Icewind Dale. Nasty up here. I have heard the stew, Jib. And Wink, I think, to our earlier conversation, you misunderstood. Make no mistake, I think, this man. We serve as a fool. A greedy, corrupt person. But he himself said... And Everett sort of shrugs his shoulders. To attend, to participate... That he could care less the outcome. Do you really think he is paying us to influence this event? Or perhaps he is paying us so that we do not think about what may happen after either way. The way I see it, he wants Vetus there to be a show of force. To remind the people of Bryn Shander that power comes at the edge of a sword. Not so different from the lords where you come from, is it? Maybe that's why it's got me thinking that way. I'm starting to feel like I'm on the wrong side here. So what is to be done? Wouldn't mind taking a bit more of Fail Barash's money, but uh, who's to say, really? Everett? From the beginning of this venture, I knew that this was just a job. A means to an end. A way to get me across this god's forsaken realm without dying in this snow. I have no moral opinion, if that is what you are asking me. I have my reasons for being here, besides, but... Everett scowls beneath his hood and crosses his arms. There is an unfortunate nagging in my mind. Isaac, as foolish as they were, reminded me of... A different time in my past. I cannot remember all but glimpses. For some time, as we have been traveling, I have been seeing more and more these visions of a past life that has escaped me. There is more here than serving as the edge of a sword, as you say, Wink. And then Everett looks down. What do you have in mind? There was a stranger came into my town, a good soul, and they told me some stories about their time with the Vetus Company. This wasn't anything like the stories they told us. I think maybe I had the wrong impression of these people. I think I might be ending my employment with them, and seeing how I might actually be useful. I thought we was coming up here to keep people safe, solve murders, and as far as I see, that's not what we're doing, so I'm not interested in that kind of work. Where I come from, I never realized that work could be good or bad. Either you had it or you didn't. You're going to need to do a lot of thinking about this. Well, you all think about it. You can keep Fail Barash's money. You can do what you want with it. You can keep working for Vetus. Maybe I'll see you on the other end of a sword. If you do, Wink just walks out of the room and goes back to their room. Jib also walks out without a word. Look what you did, Jeppy. That might be a good place to end it. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. With music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. 
Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.